These are the four stages of alcohol withdrawal when you stop drinking. And I'm telling you now, once it gets to stage three, it could get pretty ugly and dangerous more than any other drug. It's important to note that not everyone experiences withdrawal when they stop drinking. Everybody's different. Well, everybody and everybody. Many people don't even know they're dependent on alcohol until they stop drinking or take a break. It's really shocking for some because you don't always have to be that severe of an alcoholic to have withdrawal. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant. It has a sedating effect on your body, and when you quit, you don't go back to baseline. Your mind and body go into overdrive far greater than you were before. Stage one occurs roughly 10 hours after your last drink, and it includes a lot of different symptoms ranging from anxiety, nausea, vomiting, heart palpitations, and anxiety. Though these symptoms may be bothersome, generally they're not dangerous and they go away over a short period of time. Even a hangover is a mild symptom of withdrawal. Stage two of withdrawal occurs around 24 to 48 hours after the last drink, and the symptoms can be far more severe, including increased blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing. This stage can present with some fairly serious effects on your mind, including mood swings, irritability, and confusion. Even though these symptoms may be severe, they don't often necessitate medical attention. However, everybody's different, and the theme of this video is it's always good to err on the safe side. For example, if someone has a cardiovascular issue or something related, it's always best to seek help just in case. And this brings us to stage three, which occurs three to 10 days after the last drink, and I'm warning you, this gets scary. Reserved for the heaviest and long-term drinkers who stop all of a sudden, they could experience something called delirium tremens. Also known as the DTs, these individuals can experience significant handshaking that they can't control, severe mental confusion, hallucinations, even seizures that can be deadly. Thankfully, DTs only affect about 5% of people who are withdrawing from alcohol, typically people who have been drinking heavily daily for multiple years and folks who have experienced alcohol withdrawal in the past. Stage four occurs when the acute phases of withdrawal are over. These are called post-acute withdrawal symptoms, also known as PAUSE. What's interesting about PAUSE is they could last a few weeks, months, or even up to years. PAUSE can be unpredictable and present with any of the symptoms of stage one and two withdrawal. Remember, when it comes to the central nervous system, what goes up must come down, but in this case, it's what goes down must come up. It can take your body a long time adjust to not being chemically altered. Remember, it's crucial that if you're at risk for alcohol withdrawal or you start feeling the symptoms, you should always consult a medical professional. Even though alcohol is the most consumed substance on the planet, it happens to be the most dangerous to get off of. If you're dependent and you want to stop drinking, it's important to know that you can detox at different levels of care. It could be done on an outpatient basis with a doctor who knows what they're doing, or if it's more severe, maybe you have to go inpatient, whether it's an inpatient treatment facility or even a hospital. Many people want to try detoxing on their own, but not only is that dangerous, it causes needless suffering. A good withdrawal protocol can make you so much more comfortable. I know that detox, whether it's inpatient or not, may sound scary, but you really don't want to f around when it comes to this stuff. Often, detox protocols include a taper of the medication class benzodiazepines. Many of you know that benzodiazepines like Xanax can be abusable and dangerous. They work on the same receptors as alcohol, and the withdrawals can be just as lethal. However, doctors typically use a more mild form of benzodiazepine, and doing a short-term taper can really help get you into the next phase of recovery. If you enjoyed this video and you like nerding out on mental health and addiction topics like me, be sure to like, follow, share, and all that other good stuff.